For the majority of the last decade, the Minnesota Wild have been a very competitive NHL franchise and have actually made the playoffs in 9 of their last 10 seasons. Although the team has had their fair share of success, they haven't quite had a good enough roster to go on any long playoff runs, however. Getting to the second round twice in 2013-14 and 2014-15, but unfortunately losing in the first round in their 7 other trips to the postseason, including last season, when the Wild lost a hard-fought series against the St. Louis Blues. The big knock on Minnesota and the reason why many people, including myself, think they haven't been able to go on a long playoff run is because they have lacked a true superstar. A guy who can take over a game, change momentum in just one shift, and make the guys he plays with so much better. Although Zach Parise was definitely a star for Minnesota for a few seasons, and Marion Gavrick brought some electricity and firepower in his day, they have never had a superstar caliber player like they do now and Kirill the Thrill Kaprizov. Kaprizov is one of the main reasons why the Minnesota Wild could be very dangerous this upcoming season. The 2021-22 NHL season was a very memorable one for the Minnesota Wild franchise. They would surpass 50 wins for the first time in team history, set a franchise record for team points with 113, and had stud winger Kirill Kaprizov finish the year with 47 goals and 108 points shattering the team's record for most points in a single season, previously held by Marion Gabrick, who had 83 in the 07-08 season. Although there were 8 players last year who finished with at least 100 points, Kaprizov had a truly remarkable year and was 5th in league scoring. Another big part of Kirill's fantastic season was the chemistry he developed with teammate and veteran Matt Zuccarello. And now 35-year-old Zuccarello had a career year in his own right finishing with a career-high 79 points in just 70 games played. The Norwegian native has gelled extremely well with the Russian phenom Kaprizov, and the two have combined for some amazing plays and goals, which should certainly spill over into this upcoming season as well. Another reason why the Wild will be a team to be reckoned with again this year is because of how well-balanced their roster is, and the fact that they have an identity that the coaching staff has instilled in them that runs all the way through their lineup. Since coming aboard just a few seasons ago, Dean Evison has done a fantastic job getting his guys to play a way that is very tough to play against, but also lets the stars shine and enables the skilled players to do their thing. One of their best lines over the past few years has been the Joel Erickson Eck, Marcus Felino, and Jordan Greenway line, which epitomizes what Minnesota Wild Hockey should be and has been under Dean Evison. The defense core is also consistently solid, led by Captain Jared Spurgeon, who is an excellent two-way defender, and also guys like Jonas Brodeen, Matt Dumba, and Alex Goligoski. Losing a leading point getter and phenomenal talent like Kevin Fiala will certainly sting at times, but they did receive decent value back for a player that they were not going to be able to sign, largely because of the Parise and Ryan Suter buyouts. One guy that I think will help the team forget the Fiala loss is another young winger, 21-year-old Matt Boldy who's coming off of a very strong rookie season. Boldy had 39 points in 47 games in his first year, and if he would have gotten a full NHL season, he could have very well won the Calder Trophy, or at least it could have been a finalist. And although Boldy wasn't extremely effective in the playoffs with just one goal in the six games, he will almost surely build on what was a very strong first season, and if given the right opportunity in the lineup, he could put up 65-70 points in a full season this year, I think. Another big potential X-factor for the Wild this year is yet another young gun, the Austrian center who just turned 21, Marco Rossi. Rossi was the ninth overall pick in the 2020 draft and had a fantastic career in junior with the Ottawa 67s. He had some health issues during the 2020-21 season, but last year had a great first year of pro hockey, playing for the AHL affiliate Iowa Wild, and put up 53 points in his 63 games, good enough for a tie of the team lead in points. He is one of, if not the top forward prospects heading into the NHL season, and if he does make the team out of training camp, he could very well be poised for a strong rookie season and be in the conversation for Rookie of the Year if he gets a big enough opportunity. Young defenseman Kalen Addison also got his feet wet in some NHL action last season and is looking to break into the roster for a full-time spot this year as well. The Wild also made a bit of a splash at last year's trade deadline, picking up star goaltender Marc-Andre Fleury. While Fleury played solid for Minnesota last season in a short stint, posting a 9-2 regular season record and a 9-10 save percentage, 
His performance in the playoffs wasn't quite good enough to push the Wild over the hump. But the 37-year-old Flower was good enough to earn himself a two-year contract with the Wild, and with a full season on the team and the net solely his with Cam Talbot now in Ottawa, I think this Minnesota team is in great hands with Flurry between the pipes. The Minnesota Wild are coming off of their best year statistically in franchise history. Most of the team is still intact, and there are young players eager to make an impact on this team. So, will this be the year that the Wild get past the second round and become true cup contenders? The Western Conference the league is pretty wide open this year, so I say, why not them? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.